Thank you. Is there anybody else in there? No. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Like when my situation like Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Take it easy. I will. service this week. It's in Williamstown. And uh, our one great hour sharing uh, offering is today, or you can bring it uh, any of the next few Sundays. And that goes to help people in disasters, uh, people who uh, need help to raise food for their families, and to get clean water and education. And also Thursday is our our new Bible study at 6 in the Sunday School area, and everybody's invited. Please join in the call to worship in the bulletin. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. In his hands are the depths of the earth. Come, let us bow down in worship. For he is our God.
the, some of the binders were kind of falling apart, so we'll just hand them out each week. And then if you could hand them back at the end, then we'll have them for the next time. So please stand and join in our hymn, This Little Light of Mine. Jesus' name. 
So um, we're gonna we're gonna do that, but we're gonna do something a little different because we have so many uh, sicknesses going around. We're gonna we're gonna bow to people. So let's get up and, uh, and let's go. Let's go. Let's go tell people out there in Facebook land. Hi, we greet you in the name of Christ. Okay, <laughs> let's let's tell some more people. Say uh, we greet you in the name of Christ. Very good. Okay, <laughs> and let's tell these folks here. Tell them we greet you in the name of Christ. All right, we greet you in the name of Christ. We greet you in the name of Christ. We'll wave wave to everybody over there. It's pretty easy today. You have too many people, so we greet you in the name of Christ. We greet you in the name of Christ. Yeah. So that how and what did people do? Did they smile? I saw some people smiling. So and people feel good when you say hello to them. So let's say a prayer. Uh, dear God, we thank you that uh, when uh, even if we don't know people at church too well, that we can say hello, and uh, it makes them feel better and help us always remember to spread your love. Amen. All right, thanks for listening. And now Mitch Rayho will read the scriptures. Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading for today is taken from Ezekiel chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are abstinent and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, and whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are a rebellious people, they will know that a prophet has been among them. The second reading is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 2 through 10. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. Whether it was in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. <coughs> and I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was called up to paradise and heard inexpressible things, things that no one is permitted to tell. I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say, or because these surpassingly great revelations. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, I am strong. Our gospel lesson from, for today is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will seek God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the good news. Praise to you, O Christ. Please join in number 232, Lord, I want 
doing something wrong. If you ever got caught doing something wrong, raise your hand. Okay, and now here's another question. When you were caught doing something wrong, how many of you were sorry? Raise your hand if you were sorry. And then were you sorry because you did something wrong or were you sorry because you got caught? <laughs> because there is the difference. And when I was a kid, it seemed to me like the adults, uh, like parents and neighbors that, you know, they could see everything. When you, they weren't looking, they knew what was going on. And, and maybe when they didn't see things, they were like great detectives and they could ask you questions and they'd get you to talk. And uh, my friend Wanda lived in an apartment near me and so we were playing together one day and her mom had to go somewhere. And so uh, Wanda went with me to my house and Wanda really wanted to get into her apartment for some reason. And the door was locked and uh, I was with her. She decided she was gonna cut the screen window and get in. And I told her I didn't think this was a good idea, but she did and then the police uh, were investigating because her mom called the police. Someone cut the window screen and how did it happen? And my parents asked me and I told them the truth. And at the time I was sorry because I got caught, but uh, you know, I didn't think I should get in trouble, but uh, I think it's a, a good thing now that I got in trouble and I'm sorry for what I did. Well, you know, we all have weaknesses and we have sins and we're continuing our series on the surprising power of the cross. And we're talking about weakness today. What should we do about our weakness and our vulnerability and sin? And being weak is unavoidable. It's part of life. You know, it's like waiting for a test result from your doctor, you know, hoping it's going to be good or it's going to be bad. Or it's when reaching out to a friend who had a loved one died and you're worried about, you know, what should I say? Or it's asking your boss for time off and you don't know if you're going to get it. And we can spend a lot of effort trying to excuse our weakness, uh, to defend, to make ourselves look like we're strong and act like everything's okay, even when it's not. We might uh, argue with someone who says that we have a problem. So we try to avoid our weakness. But what if weakness can be a good thing? Because Jesus didn't offer his followers greatness. Instead, he offered them the cross. He said, if anyone wants to be my disciple, they should deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. And then uh, the Apostle Paul, after Jesus was resurrected and went up to heaven uh, for some years, then the Apostle Paul was converted, became a Christian missionary, and he started churches. He would then uh, visit them, you know, come back and visit. He'd write letters to encourage them, to teach them. And the church in the city of Corinth was one that Paul started. Corinth had been destroyed 200 years before. Nobody lived there for 100 years, and then they started uh, inhabiting it again. And so uh, over the course of 100 years, the people who lived there were from many different places, and they had an independent spirit. And the Corinthians were more democratic than many other cities of the time. And they didn't like others taking control. They kind of questioned authority. And their independent spirit carried over into the church that Paul founded. The churchgoers liked to pick their favorite leader in the church and line up behind them in competition with all the others. And some people at that church in Corinth didn't like Paul. They said, well, he writes good letters, but when he visits the church, he is unimpressive and a bad speaker. And not only did some of them criticize Paul, but they were open to different things, to someone preaching a different gospel about a different Jesus and a different Holy Spirit. 
there were false apostles that some in the church liked to listen to. So it seems like these false apostles showed up at the church boasting of their spiritual greatness. And Paul says, what did you want to boast? I can boast too. Are any Hebrews? So am I. Are they servants of Christ? And he says, it's crazy to boast, but I've served more. I've been in prison more times, beaten, hungry, thirsty, shipwrecked, going without food. And Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, 29 to 30, Who is weak? And I do not feel weak. Who is led into sin? And I do not inwardly burn. If I must boast, I will boast of the things that show my weakness. And so Paul, he just went out there and said it. I am weak. I am a sinner. I will boast about my weakness. And then he goes on to talk about a thorn in his flesh. And we don't know what this thorn is, but we're pretty sure it's not a thorn, but he's talking about maybe <coughs> a painful physical problem. It could be something spiritual, like feeling weak and vulnerable, like he's not up to the task. But Paul said it when he was criticized as a church leader. He didn't, you know, try to make himself sound good. Instead, he said, I am weak. And Paul said, you know, he didn't like uh, his thorn in the flesh. That's another weakness. Three times he asked God to get rid of it. And in 1 Corinthians 12, 9, Paul says, But the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. So Paul sees the good in weakness when he finds himself criticized and questioned in the church in Corinth. He leans into his weakness. He admits he's weak. And because everyone knows he's weak, they can tell, well, God's power is at work in him. He's just Paul. So, you know, doing all these things, God must have helped him. And, and so, looking at all that Paul accomplished for Christianity, it shows that God was working in him. That when he was weak, he was strong. And so when we are weak, the power of God works through us. When Paul talks about his weakness, you can tell that he is a real, authentic human being. In the, the letter 2 Corinthians, you hear from Paul, he's, he's hurting from criticism. He's humble. He cares deeply about the members of the church, that they come to know Christ, and Paul seeks the good of the church. And what <laughs> happened after Paul wrote this letter, this 2 Corinthians? Well, he made another visit to Corinth, and so that's a good sign. And then this letter, 2 Corinthians, is part of our Bible. And if the church had said, no, we don't like Paul, you know, he's no good, they would not have kept his letter, and it would not be in our Bible. So we can be confident that the church treasured Paul's words and his words about his being weak. And but isn't that the way that it goes? You might be impressed by someone's strengths, but you only like them so much because of their strengths. You connect with them, though, and you like them when they're honest and real and they're humble enough to admit their weakness. So the church in Corinth thought, Paul's not perfect, but I think they thought, I like him. He loves us. He loves God. And God has really worked in amazing ways through him. So Paul did uh, wonderful things, but only by relying on Christ and not on himself. Paul had a spiritual power that helped others to come to know God. And he never sought to dominate or control others or claim superiority. God's power was made perfect in his weakness. So my challenge for you this week is to think 
of a weakness you have and how this could be a strength. Like maybe you had cancer and it means you feel deep compassion for others who have cancer. Think of a weakness that you have and how God uh, has worked through it. You know, we'd all like the world to look at us and see we're strong, we're self-sufficient, everybody likes and admires us. We never need help and we are always right. But nobody likes a person like that. Uh, that kind of person doesn't make a difference for good and for God. So uh, we have this blessing that God has made us weak because in our weakness, God's power is made perfect. Amen. <coughs> Please stand and join in our Awesome creed, our testimony states. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. <coughs> o holy and loving God, we give you our glory and praise. We thank you for your compassion, your goodness, and your power over all the earth. We thank you today for Jesus, that he took the way of the cross. Uh, he took weakness and shame, but God's power worked through him, and he was brought back to life. And we are also people of the resurrection, and we pray you help us when we are weak, not to hide it or defend it, but to admit it and, and know that your glory will work through us for the good of others. So we thank you for our weaknesses, that they mean people uh, can relate to us. We thank you that we are strong through your power. And we pray for our world today. Uh, blessed are the peacemakers. And we pray for peace. We pray for children everywhere that all their needs are met. And they're uh, free from violence and fear. We pray for those who lost loved ones. And we pray for all who are ill, especially Janine's family. And we lift up to you now our prayer requests, as well as our thanks to you for prayers you have answered and for blessings you have given. And we do this now in silence. God, we give you our thanks. We give you our uh, all glory, for you are great and powerful, and you care for us, your children. And all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. In heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Is God 
has been good to us. We uh, give to him as we receive our offering. <coughs> Thank you. 
leisure and work, food and drink, that work and play. And we give thanks that as we offer our gifts, that we help to build your kingdom. And as we offer ourselves, we pray that your power might work with us, through us, for the good of the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to thank all who served today, Cheryl and Melanie for the beautiful music, Bonnie Rako for greeting, Kylie Welker for being acolyte, our scripture reader, Mitch Rako, the ushers, John Merchant and Landon Booth, and also thanks to Landon for passing out the One Great Hour sharing envelope, um, the video by Ashley Merchant, our Sunday school teachers, Lori Bond and Jess Welker, the bulletin by Ashley Merchant, and I want to mention Larry has been uh, taking over for Will while he's out and uh, switching out buckets of ashes and so forth, and I would really want to thank him for that. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.